Dana Barrett for Midtown Review, and my guest today knows all about women reinventing themselves. She started out after college in broadcasting, but switched to writing fiction when her kids were little. Since then, Wendy Wax has penned seven novels and is known for exploring the bonds between women as they face adversity. In her new book, Ten Beach Road, Wendy delves into the story of three women facing financial devastation after a Bernie Madoff-style Ponzi scheme. All that's left to the three are shares in a dilapidated mansion on Pasigrill Beach in St. Pete, Florida. Wendy is joining me today to talk about the book. So welcome to the show, Wendy. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about what inspired this book. How on earth did you come up with the idea to combine a Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme with rebuilding an old mansion? Well, it just sort of happened that way. But I began with really the fascination and the horror at, at what Bernie Madoff had done. I mean, all the people whose lives were ruined, all the money that was stolen, the charities that were bankrupted. I, I really just, I could not stop reading about it, watching it on television. And, and, and what happens to a writer when you get that engaged with something is you just start asking, ooh, what if? You know, what if that happened to me? And what if that happened to my husband? What if he lost everything? And then he lost his job because of it. And then he couldn't tell me and, and all of that. And, and that led to the character Madeline Singer, who is in exactly that situation. And after that, the whole house thing, that came later. Well, and so interesting that you bring up Madeline. She is sort of the main character. But there are a couple of other main characters right. as well who have pretty big parts in the story, and that's Nicole right. and then also Avery. So, And they're all very different one from the other. So tell me a little bit about the other two. Well, Avery Lawford is an architect and an HGTV host. In fact, she's actually a former HGTV host because she's been doing a show ongoing with her now ex-husband who is elbowed her out of the way and she discovers that the entire estate that her father who raised her and was very special to her and has died has also been bankrupted by this Ponzi scheme so she's left with absolutely nothing. Nicole Grant is a dating guru and matchmaker um, to the A-list folks and has offices on both coasts and so on and she also happens to be the sister of the person who perpetrates this Ponzi scheme. She's raised him um, you know, his whole life, and he's stolen all of this not only from everyone else, but from her as well. So, so all of them have lost pretty much everything and are left, really, they're awarded a third ownership in this mansion, and they all kind of hot foot it down there to see what they own, because they're assuming they'll be able to show up and just put it on the market and have, have something left. And then they show up and not so much. Yeah, not so much. So another interesting aspect to this story is, uh, the fact that these women start out as strangers. Now, I know you've written a lot about women's friendships in the past, but normally they sort of start out with a common bond. So how different was this for you? It, it was very different because you're right. When, when they have a common bond, they've been friends for some time, they've shared a lot of experiences, you're, you're starting from a very different place in a story. But in, in this situation, when, when they show up, and, and they're all in really bad situations that they don't necessarily want each other to know about because they are strangers to each other. So it was, it was a whole different experience, actually, building those bonds of friendship, putting them in these situations together. And they really, they couldn't be more different. The only thing they have in common is that they've lost everything and that all they have left is this house. Right. And speaking of the house, <laughs> Bella Flora, that's the name of the house, is really like another character in the yeah, book. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what inspired the house and the location and St. Pete and all of that. Well, you know, I was raised in St. Petersburg, Florida. Actually went to school at Sunshine Elementary uh, School, which is on Paso Grill. That is, when you look at the map of Florida on the central coast of Florida, on the west coast, you see this little comma of land that sticks out into the Gulf of Mexico. And that is St. Pete Beach and Paso Grill. And I, it's the best beach in the entire world. So I decided that I would set the story there and I would put Bella Flora there. In fact, I moved a condo building out of the way, mentally anyway, to make room for Bella Flora so that we have the views. And I think people are going to really enjoy a lot of the aspects of the book, the HGTV part and sort of the fixing up of the house and all of that. But there's also a more serious side to the book that I think book clubs are really going to want to dig into. And that's sort of all these family relationships um, and sort of this whole idea about whether or not you need to sort of forgive your family members their wrongdoings, yeah. just accept them, or whether you can just sort of start your own new family with these friends. Right. Now, there are a lot of relationships that are important to the story. In fact, uh, Madeline's 20-something uh, daughter shows up at the house. She's unexpectedly pregnant, which is a whole other storyline, and spends the summer with them there. 
and then um, also um, Avery's mother, who has been estranged for many, many years, who left when she was a young child, um, shows up on the scene as well. So I do have five women sharing a house, and actually one bathroom for quite a long time, which is a big challenge uh, in the story. And then, of course, there's Nicole and her issues with her brother and, and what's happened. So those are very central to the story all the way through. Wendy, I don't know if five women could share the same house for three hours, let alone <laughs> well, no, a whole summer. A sweat-soaked summer. It is not easy in Florida in the summertime. And I don't think the air conditioning works for a while either. That's right. Well, we're just about out of time. Time, but I do want to remind the viewers again that the book is 10 Beach Road and you can get it anywhere books are sold. For more information on Wendy, you'll want to go to her website, which is authorwendywax.com. I'm Dana Barrett from Midtown Review. Wendy, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks.